the topic of our discussion is the treasures of devotees. And uh, Krishna Kantididi, uh, uh, first question before devotees preparing their question, I want to uh, ask you uh, the most interesting question for all people in all times. It is uh, oh, really? okay. question is next. How are you uh, meet your Gurudev? Okay. And you well, tell this. I think I, I told many times. And I, I feel a little sh shame to to speak about myself. Anyway, but um, but recently, I mean, first of all, my my dandavat to all the devotees. Sorry, I'm not very good with uh, Zoom, so I don't know if I see everybody there. But my dandavat to everyone. Yeah, now I can see some names: Udaran Prabhu, Dananjay. Okay, okay, there I see. And everybody, I mean, sorry if I don't. <laughs> and, oh, Nadia Sundari, Dandavat. And, uh, but recently, you know, we were reading uh, the Brihad Bhagavatam, Rita, and Gopa Kumara also said, uh, I mean, the, the guru of, uh, now Gopa Kumara said to his, uh, this new boy, cow boy, like he to make him understand the um, Krishna consciousness. He say, I could tell you so many stories from the scriptures, but in your case, I think my story will be most beneficial. That's why I'm telling you. But so I'm little encouraged by that about speaking my own experience, <laughs> because yes, it's it's always nice to hear the story of the devotees, how they came. Uh, to, to meet their guru, how they came to Krishna consciousness. So, well, I can say something. I don't know from when I to start. <laughs> um, maybe, well, I can say I was uh, 25, just not even 25, still 24, when I, I decided to make this trip to India. And in that uh, time of my life, I was a student in a city in Italy, in Bologna. And uh, I actually just graduated from school. And so I was about to like go into the world like as an adult. I need to start my life. You know, it was a turning point for me. And uh, and my friend, I had a friend working with me in, in, uh, in the place. Like I was studying and working, and and then she she was going to India, and I asked her if I could join her. And I didn't know anything about India or anything, but I just uh, f wanted to escape from my responsibility, kind of maybe. And. Uh, and so before starting, you know, to work seriously, to start a career or anything, I just decided I take uh, some time uh, and I go to India with her. And in that period of my life, I was um, very thoughtful about, was thinking about what's the meaning of life. And uh, I was uh, searching answers, but, you know, I, I grew as a Christian, Catholic, and I didn't find uh, many answer to my questions. So I was not satisfied. And I was thinking maybe I will go study philosophy in school or something, maybe I'll try. I was looking for some friend who could give me some answer. But anyway, as I was like trying to find some answer to the most important question of life, my friends say, I'm going to India. So I say, okay, can I join you? And I joined. And she was going to look for a guru. She was into yoga and she was looking for a yoga teacher, like kind of guru. And so I decided just to, you know, join her. And she already been before, so she was expert. But I didn't have a passport, so she left first. And then I have to arrange my ticket, my passport to to join her a little later. So I made everything very quickly. Was somehow was arranged. Passport usually takes 
more than a month to make, but in four days I had my passport by my father help. And so I was able to catch a, catch a flight, go, and all by myself. I was very, <laughs> like, uh, fearless, but I never traveled before out of Italy, only London. So it was my first trip out of Europe, alone, on a plane. I didn't speak any English, <laughs> so I was a bit crazy, but um, I was confident, and I... Uh, so I, I traveled by flight and I reached Delhi and all, all alone. And on Delhi airport, I met some Italian people and say, can I join you? Because I'm alone, I don't know where to go. And my appointment with my friend was late in the night, in the evening. So it was early morning. And so I went with them. And that, that day, the very day started my, I can say my spiritual journey because they were Buddhist. So they were going to to the Tibetan quarter of Delhi. They were all the refugee were staying from Tibet, and uh, the Buddhists were there. And uh, so I went with them uh, there. And first we went on a taxi in India, in Delhi, and that I had my first experience of like surrender. What surrender means. You know, you are in this uh, very tired. We are very tired. You jump in a taxi and it's crazy. Yeah, you, you know how India is like every kind of people on the street, like horses, cows, dogs, monkeys, whatever animal, and people walking, all different kinds, driving all different kinds of uh, uh, cars and cart and anyway I, I felt like so crazy everything but I was so tired and then I say okay you know if I have to die here I will die no matter if I'm awake or asleep so I just fall asleep and just surrender to whatever destiny was there for me and anyway I little slept on the taxi in that crazy situation and we arrive in this Buddhist quarter and I was very impressed. We went to one uh, place that was this big, big statue of Buddha, gold, very beautiful, very huge. And at the bottom of this um, statue, there was a monk with a, open, a book on his uh, reading book. You know, He was reading very silent, very focused on the book. And then as I was there, he closed the book and wrapped it in some clothed with so much respect and I was impressed just by that uh, gesture you know how much respect he had for um, for this book this holy book and so I was um, in that time of my life I was kind of skeptical like I didn't I wasn't sure God is there or not I I didn't know I didn't have a, a strong belief or anything and uh, and so that first things is touch me somehow. Like I start to think that may, maybe there is something, you know, because growing in a Christian Catholic family, my parents they were kind of fanatic. Before I left, my mother said, you won't come back a Buddhist, would you? Please don't come back a Buddhist. <laughs> so do I have to stop for translation? I ask too late is it someone translating or i have to stop or i go on no no we are hearing we are hearing you good we are hearing okay translation. and someone is translating yes 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 okay. simultaneous translation and hearing in the person. okay so up to this point i i didn't believe or think about like this these things but but then I started to think, because also in India, you know, every corner of any street, you see some kind of worship going on and so many temples, so many religions there. And so I started to, to think about and I was uh, also in the meantime reading the books like Rabindranath Tagore, who later I find out he actually took all his, his 
um, topic inspiration from Vaishnava literature. That's why Guru Maharaj was a bit upset with him, I heard, because he stolen the concept from Vaishnava, from Krishna Leela and, and this, but he, he never embraced the worship of Krishna fully, you know. And so, but I really like the what he was telling his his, his the story was saying. I really enjoyed that. I I felt some connection with this uh, stories. And uh, so anyway, um, there we started my trip. Then we went to the Himalaya in Ladakh, uh, and also it was very. It was like an internal journey for me going to India, you know. And at some point, my friend was looking for a guru. We arrived. We did uh, all the north Italy, uh, north uh, India. Sorry, we went to then to Varanasi, and then to you know Gaya, Bodhi Gaya, all the places of uh, Lord Buddha. And uh, me and my friend, we sat under the tree where. Uh, Buddha got enlightened and like sitting, thinking, okay, maybe I will also get some enlightenment by sitting here and meditating. And anyway, so we proceed and, uh, you know, in my heart, I start some kind of search, start some kind of prayer. And at some point, following my friend, we arrive in uh, Puri. And in Puri, we we met... Uh, some very funny, funny guy kind of uh, yogi. Anyway, she she was looking for a guru. So we the, the rickshaw, rickshaw wala took us to a place. We told him we're looking for a guru. Please take us to some yogi or something. And then he took us to a place. Was on top of a hill. There was this little sanctuary, and inside there was this little uh, house with a bed. And a picture of uh, some yogi, some guru, or something. And he took us there, and we look at the picture. And was there was this uh, tiger skin on the bed, and and uh, but we told him, no, 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 we don't want a picture. We want a true living a person. We want a person, a living guru, not a picture. We don't want a picture. And then then he took us down, and. Uh, the hill and he took us to this place where there was a little hut and uh, one man came out from this hut and he was covered in ash and with dreadlocks and just a perizoma wearing a perizoma like Jesus you know <laughs> he came out and he was really handsome and my friend when he saw him was like oh my God, he's my guru. <laughs> and so we joined him for a while. We were hanging out with him. And he had some friend visiting him those days from the Himalaya. Coming, you know, they came to Puri. And they were all like this, as you see in the pictures, you know. Uh, this, like, very typical pictures of the yogi with dread and ash and you know, very cut profile yogi. And so we stay with them for a while. And But I didn't speak any English. And so I was a bit frustrated. And and one day, the, this man took us to Bhubaneshwar. He said, come with me. I show you I have many disciples there. I want you to meet them. And so we went to Bhubaneswar, but then what's happened that we we were paying for his, his uh, uh, how do you say, smoking ganja. We we will pay for his ganja, for his lassi. The impuri, they do this bang lassi with marijuana inside. And so he was parting with his, I mean, having his yogi activities with his friends. And we were just paying that. And he, he said that because we are women, we suppose not to, to do that. So after a while, my friend realized that maybe he wasn't really a, a good guru for 
realized she was being cheated. And this this man has some desire to go to the West. Uh, so he was very happy to meet two white uh, women that maybe we could have took him to the West somehow. And anyway, so she realized and then she cried so much. Oh, no, let's go home. Let's go back. So we left him with his friend uh, at the party. And uh, but this man was also friend with uh, another Baba who was like in Puri, they knew him as the Italian Baba. And so I told her, let's go meet this uh, Italian Baba. Actually, we're supposed to meet with him and this Indian Baba who knew him the next day. So we had an appointment 11 o'clock and, and I told her, OK, let's go meet him because at least he speaks Italian. And I was like, I, I want to hear Italian, you know, someone who explained me what's what's going on, what is this guru things and like that. And so we we went mm, to this appointment. We went to meet this uh, Italian Baba who was uh, Pitavas Das, Pitavas Prabhu. He, he was a disciple of Gurudev, actually, of Govinda Maharaj. We didn't know anything about it. But then we met with him and uh, he was also a yogi. And so he told uh, my friend, he told us, if you look in... You know, he, he show a reverse position with lotus. He show like he can do this posture, this asana. But he told this is nothing, you know, in this age of Kali, it's not necessary to practice this kind of yoga. You know, if you're really for looking for a real guru, then you should go to Navadvip. And there you will find the Jagat Guru, the guru of the world. You know, you, you should go there. And recently, I find out that Pitavas was uh, kicked out of Navadip temple by Madhusudan Maharaj on the order of Govinda Maharaj, kicked out in a sense because he was smoking ganja too. Then Gurudev told to Mahananda, who was like in charge of keeping the standard in the mat. And he told them to please tell him he cannot do that in in the temple, in the Navadvip temple. So to please tell him to to leave, you know, uh, gently. <laughs> Not that he kick him out, but gently to please let him know that if he's doing these activities in the temple, he cannot stay. And so uh, I recently found out this, that from Madhusudan Maharaj, <laughs> he told me that he had to tell him to leave. And that is why I met him in Purim, because he was staying in Navadip, but he was it just was asked him asked by Gurudev to leave. And so that's why he was in Puri. That was my luck that he was kicked out and he could tell me where to go to find a real guru. So and and he told me something that really touched me in that time, because this other yogi gave me. The Shiva mantra, Om Namah Shivaya. And he told you, chant this, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. And then I was trying to chant this mantra the night before I met Pitavas. But then I felt like I don't even know what is this, what this means. I don't know what, what I'm doing, what I'm chanting. And at that time, I also was looking for some guidance. And, and so I, I thought maybe I just pray the way I know. And I'm... I made a sincere heart prayer to God as I knew him, like Jesus and like like that. And I pray to Jesus, please, if to God, like I say, if you exist, please give me some guidance, give me some signs. And so I made my heartfelt prayer. And next day we meet with Pitavas, who is disciple of Gurudev. And Peter was told me something that in that moment, I think he was like, my prayer was answered, you know? And he told me like, you forgot about God, but God never forgot about you. And that simple phrase in that moment of my life really touched me. And in, in that moment I felt, yes, I, I believe in God, you know? I, 
I felt the presence. I don't know, somehow, some mystical, some blessing came to me from above in this way. And then he told, if you're looking for a real guru, you should go to Navadvip. And then uh, my friend, Patrizia, she wanted to go to, to see the uh, Sai Baba was at that time very popular. And he was living in Saudi, South India, yes, yeah, his center. And so she kind of wanted to proceed our journey there. And But at that point, I was firmly convinced I want to go and meet this guru that Pitavas told about. And I told her, if you want to go to see Sai Baba, okay, I have no objection. We agree in the beginning of our trip, if any time we want to split, like no problem, we would split, one go this way, this that way, with, you know, still we'll be friends, but... You know, we are ready for anything. But then she said, no, 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 we travel all this alone. I like traveling with you. Let's, I'm I'm coming with you. I want to come with you. And so we went back from Puri to Calcutta. Then we have to take a train, this local train to Navadweep. And, uh, and so we took this train and, you know, we reached Navadip Dham, the stop, the sign was Navadip Dham. We get down and we bargain a rickshaw. We finally got on a rickshaw and uh, we go to Navadip Temple. And uh, I don't know, I had this experience. As soon as I stepped in the temple, I I felt like home. It was like after so much traveling, I never felt like I'm home now. And uh, at that time, it was Madhusuda Maharaj. It was August, and towards the end of August, so there was practically very, very few Western devotees. It was only Mahananda Prabhu and Sundari Didi and uh, Shruta Shrava Prabhu was there. And Gurudev was about to travel out for a world tour. So when we arrived, Madhusuda Maharaj, I mean Mahananda Prabhu at that time, he came and he said, Hare Krishna. You know, at that time when he said Hare Krishna, it was like, oh, something was like, came out from my memory, something like, something familiar to that sound. And then, you know, they immediately say, okay, if you want to come, please, and meet our guru, is uh, he can receive you now. And they told they told us when you see him, you bow down and this and that. And so, and so they took me and my friend to to see Shila Gurudev in his uh, veranda. And uh, and we went up, and uh, then we bow down. And at that time, I wasn't speaking much English. And usually, it was my friend Patrizia who was like speaking for me, or like I would ask her to translate. I knew only a few words. But in this moment, I was like very excited. I just, because Peter was told me, ask him for initiation. You know, you go there and ask him initiation. I didn't know anything who is Krishna, who is Mahaprabhu, who is, what is initiation. But I bowed down to Gurudev and I told him, we met Peter was in Puri and he told me to ask you for initiation. <laughs> so like this. And he looked at me like, oh, who is this girl? She doesn't know anything, you know. And he smile at me and say, are you, you stay here a few days. You, you know, look around, see if you like the place, try to understand, you know, what we're doing and like this. And, and then we can maybe talk about, you know, we'll see, we'll see later. And so, and so I stayed there and Sundari uh, took care of us. And Sundari start to, actually Sundari and Shruta Shrava Prabhu uh, took care of us and uh, they explain. She, Sundari start to explain to me who is God, who is Krishna. And she's, she start describing him like he's a very handsome, ever young personality. He's very beautiful. His, his hair are like black and curly. He wears a peacock feather, a garland of forest flower. And he always plays the flute and dancing with gopis. And 
as she was telling me this, like, I was like, what is this God? And I had my image of God in my head, like a long beard guy with his finger giving birth to Adam or like, you know, sitting on some cloud in the sky. And I was like, okay, you know, is is this actually God? <laughs> like young and beautiful and dancing and playing a flute. And I, I like it. You know, I say, oh, very nice. I like very much. And I was immediately convinced that was true. And and then Shuta Shrava was uh, talking to my friend because uh, he knew I didn't understand. But then my friend was translating for me and he was just saying uh, the way he met the devotees, like this Kirtan party. And, and, uh, and he explained uh, what... What is the meaning of initiation? And he say the meaning of initiation is th that when you are starting something. And as he say that, I was thinking, okay, you know, I am starting something. I definitely not the same person that took that flight to India. <laughs> I'm really feeling like I'm. It's a new beginning for me, and uh, I'm definitely starting something. So I should. Again, ask initiation, you know. And as I was thinking this, we went out of the room. We were in the library, in a book room, you know, in Navadip. Is I mean, I don't not going to explain where it is, but anyway, we were there. And as I get out, I saw the Guru Dev is coming. Guru Dev is coming with a few devotees, and he was having a tour of the mat, like just checking the centenary building and this and that. And so I I thought it was a sign, you know, as I thinking, yes, I should take initiation. The guru comes just in front of me. And so I immediately went to him. I bowed down. And uh, this was maybe a couple of days or the day after we arrived. <laughs> and I said, I want, I would like to take initiation. <laughs> and again, he make a big smile and say, oh, okay, come with me. And uh, so he took me with him, with his tour. And uh, we went to the centenary building where there were lots of pictures of the mission all around the world. And then he took me to his uh, veranda again. And Shruta Shrava Prabhu was, was with me. And so as we are sitting, we, Guru Devi started telling me there is some regulative principle to follow you know, if you want to take initiation. And he started make, telling me this regulative principle. And I didn't know about it. <laughs> and so I was a little afraid to say, ah, oh, I don't think I can follow them all. You know? <laughs> and, but Guru Dev say, yes, yes, you can. Yeah, I think you can follow. And then Shruta Shah Prabhu told me, if he says you can, that means you can. And then I was like, okay. I can. <laughs> and so Guru Dev say, okay, then next tomorrow, 11 o'clock, we'll go to Guru Maharaj Veranda and I'll give you initiation. And so the next day I got ready, got my sari, my offering plate and everything. And uh, I, was, I got ready for initiation and on initiation he gave a beautiful class, which I didn't understand a word of what he said. <laughs> but later, I, I um, Shutashwa Prabhu published that class in one of his Vaishnava Toshani titled The, the Beginning of the End. And uh, the beginning of spiritual life, the end of material life. You know, this, this is how he called the talk he gave on my initiation. And uh, it was a beautiful talk. And so I got my. Japamala, my name, and everything. And soon that he told me, now you go in front of the deities of Guru Maharaj Temple, and you can, uh, you know, chant this Mahamanta. She explained me how to do it, and so I did. I went and I chant my round there in front of Guru Maharaj. And then next day, uh, about evening time. Sundari came to me and he said, did you chant your round today? And I was like, what? 
She said, yes, you have to chant every day, you know, at least minimum four rounds every day. And I was like, oh, okay. So I didn't understand even that. And so, okay, I I got it. And then I went chanting my round. And uh, so you can understand I was very naive. I didn't know anything. And so I took initiation. They stayed there for like a week, maybe in Navadip or some few days. Then Gurudev had uh, to go to Calcutta for... Um, uh, traveling to London, getting ready to go for a world tour. And so we also went, we also had to go with our flight back to Italy. And so I I went, uh, we also went and we stayed in the Calcutta Temple, Dandan Park, for like one or two nights. And after that, he he went to... I mean, we went back to Italy and he was uh, going to London. And so I went back and Munindra Prabhu received me. <laughs> and uh, and that is another history. How then he saw me. I was uh, so happy flying, like not walking on the earth anymore. I was just floating so happy but I didn't know anything I didn't know how to explain to him what's happened to me what uh, kind of cult I went in I did I didn't know I only knew Krishna is beautiful dancing his uh, beautiful garland playing the flute that's the only thing I knew about Krishna consciousness and so Gurudev told me also to read some book and to read Bhagavad Gita so we went to Iskon to get uh, this Bhagavad Gita, and uh, I, I went, and then when Munindra, and I start to read the Bhagavad Gita as it is, and I really, really like it as, as I opened this, this book, like all the answer I always had just came to me. And uh, and so when Munindra, like trying to understand w- what I was doing, what uh, was my practice, I say, I cannot explain that but you please read this book it's uh, it's amazing just read this book and so I gave also one to him and he started reading the book as he was working in the office with his brother and then he called me and he said you know this book all the answer I always look for in the university because he was studying philosophy in the university you know that they couldn't get there they are in this book you know it's so wonderful and so anyway, after like six months, we went back to India together and then Munindra took initiation from Gurudev. And, and so this is how we started our mission in Italy. We start after that. I stay longer, I stay six months. In the beginning, I was like six months in India, then six months in Italy, then six months in India, few months in Italy. Like that, I was just going back to Italy because couldn't get a proper visa, only six months. And uh, and so I would say six months with Srila Gurudev and then back to make some money to stay more longer. And, and still that time I was back and I was back into my parents' house. So at some point my father like looking at me and very disappointed, like, I send you to study and this and that. And now you're not working. You're just living here and going to India and come back and go to India. Now you, this this is not possible, you know, if you, and I cannot support this. And then as he said that, I told him, then what, what do you want me to do to get a job and work hard until I die? This is what you want for me. And he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I mean not that they want me to work hard and die but I, the, the conversation went along like you know I don't find any meaning in doing in living like this just working working having a family life and then just die you know this is what's happened to everybody I don't want to go that way but he said yeah this is the way the world works you know this is how you you do you know you you get old you work you make a family and and then you know you die 
And I was like, no way, you know, I can't do that. I want to be with my guru, I want to practice spiritual life. And then I left home. I pack my bag and I say, okay, you know, I'm going. <laughs> and then I, I call Munindra and I say, please, can you, can I stay with you? And he, he had a little, little place, uh, really. Anyway, it's another story. And then I would stay in there and... Uh, and that's it. And then I made up my mind that I would just as much as possible stay in India with Gurudev. And that's it. This is first part of the story. Is okay? Do I am sure that all devotees is very was very happy to hear in this story my meditation. Okay. And we have a few questions from a devotee. Sorry, I uh, must um, my my microphone on me moment. And the uh, first question is from Udaran Prabhu. Mm. He asking, Dandavat Krishna Kanta Didi, if you could choose one most important thing, what would be your answer to the question? How to stay in Krishna consciousness for the rest of the life? And we have well, the question. Yeah, this is this is also was my question because I know my nature that I'm not very stable. I like coming doing many things, you know. I I always was so scared of getting a, like a fixed job where you go to the office every day, do the same things every day. That was the things that scary most me most. So I was afraid that I I also would get like this with Krishna consciousness. I I thought knowing my nature, how maybe I won't stick to it. Maybe you know I will go away, do something else. So I was thinking, how will I? put myself you know to in in a situation that i won't be able to live this is what i try to trick myself try to put myself in this situation and then it came the opportunity came because then gurudev asked us to do a center a stable center in italy actually um it was when I was in India for so long with Gurudev, then naturally was my desire to, to have the same kind of situation in Italy, you know, like to have a place also in Italy where it would be so nice to be with devotees and like that. So when we invited, we invited one year in 1999. Wow, looks like a fantascienza. So science fiction movie in 1999 <laughs> uh, we invited Gurudev to come to to Italy and uh, we rent a place in Rome a castle a castle in Rome and we invited him and and there he said uh, try to make a, a center a permanent center you know after this tour he said like that and so since then, we, myself and Munindra, and uh, the time was, uh, yeah, maybe was at Vai and Krishna Kumari. We look uh, for a center, like, I mean, me and Munindra in the beginning, just all over Italy, a place uh, we, could, we could buy or, you know, where we could make a center. And, uh, and anyway, at the end, we found uh, Villa Govinda to make it short. And we got a mortgage. So this is the way we did, you know. But the, the answer to that uh, question is just try to get a responsible service. Like a service that you are responsible of, that you can't give up. That you, you know, you have to stick to it. And so for, for us was this, the making a center and having a mortgage to pay every month and, uh, you know, having a respons responsible service. 
it's not something like you know you can run away anytime or like like that the so something that you have to do it even you know as good they say when not every day the sun is bright in the sky you know sometimes there is some cloud sometimes it's raining snowing or anything so not every day we feel the same inspiration to to do our service to to stick to to it or to you know practice our spiritual life but if you yeah, chain yourself somehow <laughs> to it you have to do it even when you're not so inspired and you have to keep doing it and so eventually you know then the clouds disappear and the sun again and so like this you go through all the difficulty and the up and down of your feelings and things and this is what help to keep you connected and always be in touch with the devotees who like devotees who are serious who are inspired that can inspire you so when you're not feeling inspiration or like that there is someone else who is inspired like now I'm here with um, Bishaka, Didi and Kanupriya and I'm getting inspiration from them like this, even if the weather in Hungary is really not so pleasant this moment, it's raining all day and it's grey, the sky is grey, but still near the Vaishnava who are inspired is always a sunny day. Yeah. Like this. So, yes, responsible service, something that you do it and you don't give up. Uh, Narayani also have a question. She can ask by voice. Yes, Narayani. Many people probably well, wanted uh, that Shiva Gurudev came to them, but uh, not many were successful. For example, Shiva Gurudev never got to visit Ukraine. So, uh, what did you have to do internally and externally to invite Shiva Gurudev? So that he came to Italy. <laughs> well, I think we were just his mercy that he came. What can I say? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Gurudev was very merciful with me. I don't know why. This is what we call unconditional mercy. <laughs> There's no condition. There is no reason. He expressed his desire to come to Rome. You know, he told me he always wanted to come to Rome. And then we try our best to invite him. And our first meeting was in Rome. And uh, what can I say? Well, the one, the first time I met Gurudev outside of India was when he came to Strilki in the Czech Republic. And as he was there, um, he gave a class, which really impressed me, one sentence he made. He said, try to become very dear to your guru. And these uh, things he said, it really touched uh, my heart. And then I always try to think how I will become dear to him, you know, and... Uh, and so when I went to India, I observed that there were some devotees very close to him and very dear to him. And like Bhakti Lalita, Sundari, or Sita Didi, like this, that they were very close near in a circle serving him. And, and then I thought they are very dear. If I can do something for them or if I can become their friend, then maybe I will also be dear to him. <laughs> and so Bhaktilalita Didi was um, every day going out uh, for preaching, for distributing books, inviting people. She was she would go, but she needed a partner to go. So she would go uh, in offices, houses, especially office, every day after lunch, Prashadam. And so I, I joined her 
And I was like uh, bringing, taking the bag. She has this heavy bag with books. And then I, because I didn't speak English, I couldn't preach. I, I was just, you know, accompany her. And the only thing I could do to be helpful was just carrying the bag. <laughs> so I was young and strong that time. So I, I would carry the bag and uh, she would, uh, I would go with her. Uh, door by door, preaching, making our mission known to the people of Calcutta. And I did that for uh, like a few months. Whenever I was uh, in India, I tried to help her with this service. And, uh, and it was very nice because, and then after we come back from the preaching, then we meet, we would meet Sheila Gurudev and Lalita would give him the money we collected. I mean, she collected. I was just, <laughs> you know, there like a fish, not speaking anything. Any. And and Gurudev was very happy to see this. Because, I mean, it's a little sacrifice to go after lunch to <laughs> downtown Calcutta in the traffic and dirt and smog and pollu the pollution, you know. Uh, and then we come back and it's already dark and it will, will be very nice. We just sit with, with very few people, you know, around Gurudev those days. And so we would just wait for him. Also, maybe he would go out also to do some service for the mission. And when he come back, we receive him. Then he takes prashadam. He let us sit there with him as he's taking prashadam. And after he takes prashadam, he give a distribute sweet to all like the devotee there. So we took prashadam from his hand. That was wonderful. He gave his, I mean, instruction to his coca, his boy, his servitor to distribute a special suite. And this would go on for months, like we would do this, like going out. And then Gurudev would also travel. Sometimes he he would go to Puri and we go to with him in Puri Dam or in Vrindavan. Like some Kartik times we would be with him in Vrindavan. It was very beautiful to be with him in Vrindavan. He would sing a lot of songs, the Kartik song. This is how I I learned that, you know, the the tune of the Vrindavan song from him, especially the Damodarastakam, the way he sing it, I like very much. And so many other things. And we would just be with him. In Vrindavan, we didn't do like any parikram or anything. We just stay with Gurudev there in Vrindavan, in Govardhan, like this. Mm. Why I'm talking about this? What what was the question? Sorry, I forgot. What was the question, Narayani? Again? About secret. What do you do that uh, she ah, would have come? You only invite? <laughs> yeah, the secret. Yes, and that was the secret. I mean, he wanted to come to Italy, so we we did invite him. And and yes, and then when he said uh, to make a permanent place, we look everywhere, all over Italy, so many places. And uh, finally, one day we were um, in India. Oh, and then one day we, when we invite Gurudev, the first meeting in Rome in 1999, also this great Vaishnava, Yudamanyu Prabhu, Asya Priya, and uh, uh, Vidura and other devotee came um, from America to join the meeting. And that time, myself and Muninda, we were living in this little, little place who was a cow shed before. And, you know, we transformed it into a living space, but it was very small, like, and... Uh, and they were supposed to stay uh, guest in the in another devotee's uh, bigger house, but at last moment he couldn't host them, so we had to host them in this space. But it was like thirty-five square meters, so we actually didn't have enough space for them. And so at that time there was a friend of mine who was living in what is now Villa Govinda, 
that uh, house was uh, some my hippie friend who were living there. And then I asked her, I told Munindra, let's ask her to host the devotees. Because that time we were all, already like thinking about making an ashram in Italy. And then I told Munindra, let's ask her to host the devotees. So if they will sleep there, it will become an ashram. And so that's happened. You know, the, the devotees slept there in my friend's house, which later became Villa Govinda Ashram. And later means next year we are in India. And uh, one phone, one email come from a friend of us, another friend who was living in Villa Govinda previous, before became become Villa Govinda. And she told us, the owner of this house, they're selling. They're selling the property. So it's now on sale. And then myself and Muninda, we like, okay, we can buy now that place. We can make an ashram because... It wasn't an ordinary house. It looks just like a perfect place for an ashram, you know, with many rooms and and things. And so I, I am with, with Munindra. We just from India call the owner and say, "Well, we are in, interested to to buy this property." And it was crazy because me or Munindra, we didn't have a job. We didn't have a, any paper income, anything, you know. But we're thinking we are gonna buy a house. It was crazy. But anyway, so in some somehow we arrange and then together later together with Madhuranand and Shantimoy and Shamasundar, we were able uh, miraculously, miraculously or whatever, in miracle we got mortgage from the bank, and we were able to buy uh, Villa Govinda, and so, and so that's it. So try to, you know, become dear to your guru, try to satisfy his desire, his expectation, and try to understand what they are, because not always like, yeah, Guru Dev wasn't like so much saying, giving order or like this, you know. Sometimes the Vaishnava they don't like, especially Guru Dev, because he knows if we don't follow his instruction, we make Guru Aparada. So he didn't, he had some experience of instructing people and then they don't do. So in the late time of his life, he wasn't in, giving in direct instruction, you know. He, he was more like inspiring people to do, devotees to do service. So you need to have some special antenna to understand what's the need, what which way you can serve the Vaishnava, or what is their desire, what is their expectation. They're not always openly like saying, you know, but you you need to always be alert, always be like sensible and try to understand what could be uh, you know, a service opportunity and try to catch it. It's not always clear, you know, and especially the Vaishnava, they don't want to be served, like personal, like Srila Guru Devi needs last year, is he told them very shy to get this direct service, you know, like personal service, like the devotee will serve me because now I'm invalid and this and that. He's saying I'm very shy to get the personal service from the devotees, you know. So the Vaishnava, they don't want to be served, especially also now we live with Madhusuda Maharaj and we see how much it's impossible to serve him. He's self-sufficient, you know, he doesn't require anything, he's, uh, he's very simple. He, so it's not easy to serve the real Vaishnava, you know. They don't have any need for themselves. They only want to serve others, you know. So... Yeah, but there is always a way to do it somehow, you know. So we need to to be attentive, to be like have some radar to detect the necessity in the ashram, in the devotees, like this. I think we are over the time. Is it? No, it's 12. Yes. 
so secret. I don't mm. know if it's a secret. I mean, but. And sincerity. Be sincere. You know, that is the most. And chaste. Also, Gurudev always like chastity and sincerity. These things in the beginning of my relationship with Gurudev, I heard so many times these two words. Chastity and sincerity. You need to be chaste to your guru and to be, which doesn't mean to be fanatic in the sense, in the negative way, like, you know, you, you serve your guru is, I mean, for you is everything, but that doesn't mean you don't respect others, you know. It's like a wife as a husband, he serves his husband, he loves his husband. Doesn't mean that he doesn't notice that there are other beautiful men, but he just don't, you know, mix with them. But he offers respect to, to others, you know. It doesn't mean that you have to criticize others or like be a fanatical in that negative way, like diminish the prestige of others or like that. We have seen Gurudev was a fanatic of his guru, was very chaste and loyal to his guru, but he always glorified all the Vaishnavas. He always glorifies everybody, you know. So to be a fanatic doesn't mean to be unrespectful towards other or like this, you know. Always give honor to every Vaishnava, to everybody, but be faithful to your guru. I think if any other question or maybe not. I don't know how long is it. Is it? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if this is a one hour Zoom, yes? And we have so much uh, good message from devotees uh, of gratitude uh, from, I want to read this uh, messages from Scarlett. Hare Krishna, wonderful story. Thank you for sharing. Uh, from Tungarasa Didi, offer my humble, affectionate obeisances, dear Krishna Kanta Didi. Dandavats to all the devotees. It is Tungarasa Didi. And Ganga Maya uh, wrote, Dandavats, it is so inspiring to hear such sweet stories, especially science, the sun is not always shining, and we have to keep our practice. And uh, also, uh, we have one, maybe you can uh, short uh, question before we can uh, finish mm -hmm. this meeting from Mary. Dandavats, can you say a few words about finding hope and joy and growth in situations that are con conventionally uh, considered tragic or unfortunate? Uh, well... Well, I don't know if you know, but when we make, when we bought Villa Govinda, when we made uh, Villa Govinda, I, I was having a bone marrow transplant because I had leukemia. So apparently it was a very tragic situation. It was very <laughs> dramatic. And, uh, but... I mean, for me, it was a very good opportunity. I felt it was a very good opportunity because I was thinking I may die tomorrow because I mean, there is lots of uh, chance that you don't survive the chemo, the transplant and this and that. And uh, so for me, uh, it was a good time to take my chance, you know, I may die tomorrow, but now I have my opportunity to do something that will please my guru, that will please the devotees. And it was very inspiring for me to be in, in that situation. And uh, it was uh, helping for me to remind, remember like Parikshit Maharaj, who had only seven days to live, but he made much of his time, you know, best use of his time. And uh, as I was taking the chemo, I was uh, thinking about Pralad Maharaj 
his father like gave so many torture of him to him like uh, you know hot oil it threw him down the hill and threw against him mad elephant and all this and I was taking as I was taking all this treatment I was feeling like Palad Maharaj also got so much trouble from his father and anyway so I think yes we can you know if we if we know who we are that we're not this body and we're not the mind and where we are going that you know we are under the umbrella of Gurudev, Guru Maharaj then anything can happen but it doesn't really affect us if we are remembering really that you know like our fortune we are so fortunate that even if we leave our body we still you know we still doesn't we don't lose anything it's just a body you know but uh, yes yeah, so to remember our fortune to remember our guru and also how much they suffer they have to go through like you know in their life that can give us uh, hope and as uh, as i was saying not every day the sun is bright in the sky but eventually it will be it's not not that the gray sky will last forever so i think a good way to go through things is just um, when the heavy things happen just tolerate you know this is guru gurudev formula for harmony to be tolerant to be humble and to give honor to others it's not just uh, words but this need to be applied you know remember that once you surrender to your guru to krishna they take care of you so whatever comes is of course the result of our karma but he's also coming you know in a way that it is affectionate way for us to learn some lesson that we wouldn't learn in another in some other way so because Krishna is taking care, Krishna is behind it. So whatever is uh, supposed to come back as a reaction of our karma is now coming with the hand of Krishna, like coming in a way that will be helpful for us. And we try to see the smiling face of Krishna behind the screen. And uh, we, we will have faith that everything is for our benefit for our realization for making us to become Krishna consciousness and also as a teacher pain is come as a teacher to remind us that this is not our home this is not our place if we would be always happy and we just waste our life enjoying you know but some suffering coming to us reminding us that we are not this body this is not our home and and this will help us to improve uh, our spiritual practice to imp will help us to go deeper in trying to understand what is really Krishna consciousness and try to you know go deeper into the teachings of our gurus so we can when some trouble comes you know we can be like Kun Queen Kunti you know be sure that when trouble is coming is because krishna is also coming to to help is is the hand of krishna behind it so we can remember him more strongly we can go deeper in our understanding of the our guru's teaching you know so everything will be a chance for us to be remember to to remember krishna guru their teaching and to put them into practice i think mm -hmm. in a simple way yeah is this is always a question for the devotees and the answer is sudarshan prabhu and the, the Lindbergh family they're very expert in this this loka tattenu kampan sushamik shamano like we have this is our sadhana this is our practice to learn how to see how to read the environment in a krishna conscious way like 
to see that every wave is that comes to us, everything comes, it's favorable for our improvement, you know. It's nothing, the environment is not our enemy. The environment actually is giving us our service. So we will try to see that. Not, no blade of grass can move without the will of Krishna. So anything that happening around us, it's happening for a reason and and the reason is that Krishna wants to take us back in any way. So sometimes he gives a candy, sometimes a slap. But everything is given with affection. Like the, the mother, you know, sometimes the mother has to slap the kids. Not because he doesn't like the kids, but for his good, for his, you know, he needs to learn uh, how to behave and so that he can go in a proper man or woman, you know. So everything is coming for our benefit so that we can go in Krishna consciousness. Yes. Yes, I think this is in short. And we can talk about this for long, but I think... Okay, Mary, I hope I answer your question. Marie or whatever, I don't know, the accent. Marie, yes. Yes, yes. First of all, you're saying it, yes, correctly, Marie. And, okay. Um, <laughs> yes, that that did. Um, I just, I've just finished breast cancer treatment and I had heard oh. that you had gone through some somewhat similar experiences. And so I was... Yes. wondering you know how what parallels there might be um and that was exactly what i needed to hear thank you okay yes yes sometimes it's tough <laughs> situation are tough but you know it's the material world so yes these things happen but uh, you know we have to finish our karma one way or another one and Sometimes when so much suffering comes, I think it's like an acceleration, karma acceleration, speed up, like quickly you get rid of many things. So in that way, you know, you think more quick, I will go back, you know, to Krishna. <laughs> Let's finish quickly these things. Otherwise, drop by drop, you know, but once <laughs> so much comes and one short time and it will be finished that karma you know and we'll be free from that so yes our guru say like bow down you know you bow down bow down with humility and tolerate tolerate everything and quickly it will be over you know yeah so i wish you all the best for that <laughs> Okay, dear devotees. So I think we are over the time, yes? So Krishna Kantidi, uh, please accept our gratitude from all yes. devotees. Uh, we are very My happy gratitude. that you yeah, are very happy. <laughs> You come in and we want to invite you again on these classes. Yes. And please uh, send our obeisances and devotees to all devotees who are with you. Yes. And, uh, wish you yes. good health, strong power. Yes, good. It was, uh, I'm here in Hungary, otherwise, usually the Saturday, Sunday, I'm busy with our Villa Govinda kiosk. Mm -hmm. But now I'm free. <laughs> so. It was was good good timing. <laughs> I'm happy to see you all and my dandavats and hope to see you in person soon. Everybody, yes. Jai dandavat pranam jai shla gude van chakal patavu gascha kripa sindu pevach vapati tanam pavane biovesh na vedu na monama dandavats. Thank you. Thank you, dandavats. And uh, you can find these records of this uh, dialogue uh, in the YouTube channel. You can find the link in the 
uh, chat Narayani sent. Or if you have some questions about organizing this uh, uh, classes, please write to Narayani. She will help you. And Krishna Kanta did you again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Dandavats. Nice to see you. Dandavats. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.